can you talk about your presentation on the relevance of cytokine storm syndrome to COVID-19? Sure. So uh, I'll be talking about cytokine storm syndromes in general and what that term really means. It's kind of an umbrella term that covers a lot of hyperinflammatory conditions that go by different names like macrophage activation syndrome that most rheumatologists are familiar with or hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis. And cytokine storm it kind of encompasses all of those and they share features, but they're not all identical. And I think it's important to keep those distinctions, particularly as we define them uh, in our patient populations, as well as how we would consider treating them. Um, so I'll spend a fair amount of time just talking about cytokine storm syndromes in general, how we diagnose it, the proposed kind of pathophysiology of these disorders, um, the broad spectrum of these disorders, and then start talking about some of the genetic predispositions, uh, including some of the genes we uh, already know to look for, as well as a potential novel gene, and then kind of end with how uh, many of us think that COVID-19 has a, a cytokine storm. It kind of falls under that umbrella as well. It's unique in many ways from other cytokine storm syndromes, but it has enough features that treating the cytokine storm, I think, is really important to uh, prolong survival. So what do you think clinicians should be aware of, especially aware of when treating these kinds of patients, especially uh, COVID-19 patients? Yeah, so if you don't require hospitalization, and usually that's for an oxygen requirement, not always, but most typically, um, there's probably not a whole lot you need to do as a rheumatologist, for example, uh, just kind of let the patient ride out either a completely asymptomatic illness, which you're not going to do anything about uh, other than kind of uh, stay away from everyone else, or even, you know, as bad as like a, a horrible flu-like illness that you're just kind of dealing with at home for a week or two. Uh, but if you're hospitalized and you have uh, evidence of inflammation by laboratory markers, for example, you have an oxygen requirement, fever, for example, then you probably want to intervene at that point, if there's evidence of a cytokine storm before things uh, get substantially worse, and hopefully before you get to the intensive care unit or require invasive mechanical ventilation. And that intervention, no one really knows what the right thing to do is, but there's some evidence at least now that glucocorticoids, at least like moderate doses of them, will uh, help survival, for example but maybe even some of the targeted approaches that we use in rheumatology to go after individual cytokines or groups of cytokines uh, may also be beneficial in those settings as well.